The cape in Super Mario World is the most versatile power-up in the game. It's also the most mysterious. You can search YouTube for how to do Kaizo tricks or troll levels and all kinds of things, but strangely there's a lack of information on exactly what all the cape can do. Well I've decided to fix that with this video. In this video I'm going to cover both flight modes that you can get with the cape. In order to differentiate the two, I'll call this floating mode, and this I will call helicopter mode. Also, any of the directions I give will assume you're flying to the right, so if I ever give directions that involve pressing left or right, you'll need to reverse those directions if you're flying to the left. Also, there are lots of special tricks you can do with the cape involving items, but this video will only cover flying without objects. One last thing you should be aware of. While the cape in Mario Maker 2 has many abilities, the original Super Mario World and its ROM hacks include lots of cape tricks that you can't do in Mario Maker, like switching left and right while grabbing the cape, doing this trick called multi-cape, flying under things in helicopter mode with no ground, dive bombing while holding items, and a bunch more, so if you're wondering why I don't cover them, it's because you can't do them in Mario Maker 2. With that in mind, let's begin. I'll start by covering the basics of using the cape that both flying modes have in common. First you begin running and once Mario's arms are sticking out you've reached P speed and can begin to fly immediately. One thing I want to make sure you keep in mind is that in all of my directions in this video you should be holding run the entire time. If there's ever a time when you will need to let go of run I will specifically say it. So how much space do you need to get P speed? Well this varies based on if you're standing still or have any momentum. If you're standing still against a wall, you'll need 8 blocks in order to gain P-Speed. However, the problem here is that you gain P-Speed after crossing the 8th block. What this means is that if you run off a ledge after running 8 blocks, you'll be able to fly immediately after landing on a flat surface below you. But this isn't usually available, so really you need 9 blocks of flat ground to gain P-Speed and begin to fly if you're starting from against a wall. Now if you're able to stand off the edge of one side of a block, then you'd only need 8 blocks to gain flight since you'd technically be running the distance of 8 blocks to gain P-Speed, and then a little more so you can hold jump to begin flying. Lastly, if you have enough space out off the edge, you can jump out to gain momentum and would only need 5 blocks of ground to gain P-Speed and fly. One big difference between P-Speed in Super Mario 3 and Super Mario World is that in Mario 3 you can gain P-Speed in a smaller area by going back and forth since your P-Speed drains slowly. But with the cape in Super Mario World, you lose your P-Speed as soon as you change directions. Lastly, with all the different amounts of blocks that it takes to reach P-Speed, you have to do them all while only running with no jumping. So if you have a setup like this with a whole bunch of 3 and 4 block surfaces, you'll never actually be able to gain P-Speed because your jumping messes up the momentum. Both flying modes take you up exactly 20 blocks from your launching point. This means if you have anything on the 21st block up from the ground, you won't hit it on your initial launch. Now I'll begin to go over all the things you can do in float mode step by step. To start off, open an empty level in editor and stretch it all the way and make ground all throughout. You'll also need to place a coin or something high up so the camera follows you when you fly, otherwise it'll do this. I want to reiterate something I said earlier where you should always be holding the run button, unless I specifically say to let go of it. If you let go of run during any of these steps, you won't be able to do what I'm showing. For your first launch, run to the right and anytime after you've gained P speed, press and hold jump and keep holding right. Congratulations, you've done a dive bomb. So what does this do? A dive bomb will kill any enemy that's on screen and touching the ground, including boss enemies, even Big Bowser. You can do a dive bomb in midair or while pushing up against a wall. One very important part of dive bombing is that you have to be holding right when you touch the ground. If you go into dive bomb mode and let go of right just before landing, nothing will happen. A dive bomb can also help you absorb damage from anything that might hurt you which can help you damage boost through areas that you normally wouldn't be able to. 
For the next launch, let's put a long string of spikes around this part of the level. And starting from the beginning, start running and once you have P-Speed, press and hold jump and keep holding right up until you get to the top of your launch and then let go of holding right, but keep holding run. You can actually let go of jump also, but that doesn't really matter. Mario tilts downward and slowly floats to the ground and when he hits the ground, he absorbs the damage like before. What this shows you is that anytime Mario is grabbing his cape in float mode, he won't take damage. However, be careful to note that this has to be after the peak of your launch, once he starts holding the cape. If you get hit on your way up, you'll take damage and lose the cape. So now for our third launch, we'll do like before, where we run, launch, and let go of right after the peak of our launch, and as we're floating downward, press and hold left. You'll see that Mario floats upward. Keep holding left until Mario has floated up all the way and then you'll notice he starts tilting down again. Once he's tilted down all the way, press and hold left again and he'll float back up again. This can go indefinitely until you get to the end of a level or a wall. The key is to press and hold left once you see Mario in this position. If you press and hold left early while he's tilting downward, you'll see this happen and you'll need to wait again until he's tilted all the way down to try again. You can see here that with bad timing, if you keep mashing left, he won't ever float up because left is being pressed before he reaches the fully tilted position. Also note that once you start floating, you won't be able to change directions in midair. You'd have to land and then do the whole launch process over again in the opposite direction. One special thing about this movement is that if you time it just right and press and hold left immediately when you see him at the fully tilted position, he'll actually float up a little higher than he was before, and if you keep doing this you can gain some height beyond the normal maximum launch height. For our next launch, I'll show you how to control your initial floating speed. If you gain P speed and jump, and then just before the peak of your launch, hold left just a little bit, You'll change directions and start floating to the left at a slower speed. It's slower because you changed your momentum right before grabbing the cape. If you're running to the right and want to float slowly to the right, you could hold left a little while you're gaining height and then hold right just before reaching the top. You'll notice that you're floating much slower than the previous time when you held right the whole time during the launch. Also note that you can change directions as many times as you want before you reach the peak and grab your cape. This could allow you to float extra slow. So what if you're floating slowly and want to go faster? All you do is hold right a little to tilt forward and then hold left to float back up. The farther down you dip, the faster you gain speed. Something I'd like to mention is that you don't have to reach the peak of your launch every time you fly. If you let go of jump immediately after pressing jump, you'll see that Mario grabs his cape at 7 blocks high and if you're quick enough with pressing and holding left, you can keep flight while low to the ground. Or you can let go of jump halfway up your launch. It doesn't really matter when you let go of jump as long as you never let go of run. And on that note, here's the one time you'll want to let go of run. If you're floating across an area and want to land quickly on a small piece of ground, your only option is to dive bomb to get there. But if you pass the area, you'd have no way to get there while floating. But at any point during your floating, if you let go of run, you'll let go of your cape and stop the floating mode. This way you'll be able to quickly change directions and land on the spot you need to. An easy way to remember this is that in float mode, hold run to hold your cape and let go of run to let go of your cape. So to summarize float mode, you hold jump to gain height, you can let go of jump at any point to begin float mode, press and hold left at the correct timing to maintain the floating. Also at any point while floating, if you hold right, you'll go into dive bomb and charge to the ground and can kill anything that's touching the ground on screen. You're also able to have a few seconds of invincibility if you touch an enemy or a spike while you're in float mode, either while flying or dive bombing. Start off the same way you did before with a full area of flat ground. Begin the level by running and once you have P speed, press and hold Z and you begin to fly upward into helicopter mode. You'll reach maximum height and begin to come back down. You can hold Z to float down slowly or let go of Z to fall faster or alternate as needed. 
Now for your second run, I want you to do the same thing as before, except that you keep holding run and right when you land. Notice here that as soon as you land, you have P-Speed and are able to helicopter back up and repeat the process without having the initial nine block running requirement to gain P-Speed. You can test this a few times by pressing jump immediately after landing and you'll see that you keep launching back up. So for the third launch, let's run to the right and once we get up to the peak, let's stop moving horizontally and float down vertically and as soon as we see the ground, hold right and keep holding run. You'll see that just like before, once you land, you immediately have your arms stretched out and are ready for another helicopter launch. Now for our fourth launch, place a stack of two blocks near the area that you landed the previous time. Once we get to the peak of our flight, let's float down vertically like before, except this time hold right when your feet are two blocks from the ground. You'll notice that when you land, you won't have P-Speed, which means you won't be able to launch yourself back up immediately. So why don't you have P-Speed when you landed this time? The reason is because when you're floating down in helicopter mode, in order to maintain P-Speed when you land, you have to be holding run in either left or right for the distance of at least four blocks just before you land. It's similar to when I showed you earlier that if you give yourself floating momentum that you only need five blocks to gain speed, except this time when you give yourself four blocks of momentum in helicopter mode, you'll have P-Speed immediately when landing. In the example I just showed, when you begin to hold left or right at two blocks above the ground, you only move about three to three and a half blocks horizontally, which doesn't give you enough momentum to maintain the P-speed. And this works whether you're floating or free-falling. As long as you've moved more than four continuous blocks of space before landing, you'll be able to helicopter again immediately. One thing I'd like to note is that you don't have to hold Z all the way up to the maximum height for any of this to work. You could hold Z for even just a second, and as long as you have four blocks to move horizontally before landing, you'll keep your P-Speed and be able to launch again immediately. Another thing to note is that landing on enemies won't lose your P-Speed. So you could start in helicopter mode, hop through a setup like this, and still keep your P-Speed as long as you have the four blocks of momentum before landing. So to summarize helicopter mode, you reach P-Speed by running in either direction, and then you press and hold Z to begin helicopter mode. You can fly up to the 20th block, or you can let go of Z at any point during your ascent and begin falling down sooner. You can hold Z to float down slowly, or let go of Z to free fall. And whether you're floating down or free falling, as long as you're holding run in either left or right for a length of four or more blocks before touching the ground, you'll retain your P-Speed and be able to helicopter immediately back up again. You can do this on and on infinitely. There's no limit to how many times you can helicopter back up as long as you keep the horizontal momentum of four or more blocks right before landing. I would like to make a quick note that the helicopter mode has the same animation as a regular cape spin jump, and they have most of the same attributes where both can attack enemies or trigger things from the side. Both can land on enemies that a normal spin jump would allow you to jump on. However, one big difference is that you can't do a cape spin jump and have the immediate P-Speed by moving four or more blocks before landing. That's because in helicopter mode, you had P-Speed when you started it, but with a regular spin jump, you don't have P-Speed, meaning that when you land, you'd have to run the normal amount it takes to initially get the P-Speed. Thank you so much for watching my cape tutorial video. I'd love to know what you thought about it, so definitely let me know in the comments, and also, let me know if you have any questions about anything I did or didn't cover. Also, don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed it, and if you want to see future Mario Maker 2 videos of all kinds, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.